In this video, we're going to look at a really important reaction called the aldol condensation. Now, we spent a lot of time looking at forming uh, enolates from ketones and esters. We know that this can be very useful because you can uh, form these enolates and then you can alkylate them. Aldehydes can also form uh, uh, enolates, but there's a problem trying to do uh, simple uh, alkylations of aldehydes. And that's the problem is the whole system is just too reactive. Now, aldehydes are more acidic uh, than, a, than a ketone because they have less stabilization of that carbonyl. They only have an alkyl group on one side. Uh, so this actually also makes them more acidic. So the enolates are really easy to form. You just throw in a little bit of base and you'll immediately form an enolate of your aldehyde. The good for difficulty is the reactivity of this carbonyl over here. Because let's see what happens to this enolate. Well, the enolate could do, what can the enolate do? Well, it could, it, it, it could react with a mole of water and form an enol. Uh, there's the enol. Or it could react with a mole of water and just go back and reform the uh, aldehyde. Well, those are kind of boring things. We want to do something more exciting. Because what else can it do? Well, it can take advantage of the fact that that carbonyl, the aldehyde, is so reactive. So the other reaction that it can do is once you form one mole of enolate, you can go back and react with another mole of the starting aldehyde and you can form this uh, addition product here. It's a strange looking thing. Uh, this guy can pick up the proton and it'll go to this molecule which is a mixed, uh, 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 it's a mixed uh, aldehyde and an, al and an alcohol. And so it's given the name aldol. So the al of course is from the aldehyde, the ol is from the alcohol. This is an aldol. It's got a, it's got the, it's an aldehyde with a hydroxide in the beta position. Now, this can react with base to do an elimination because uh, these hydrogens down here are very acidic. So you can uh, deprotonate there, form a, a new enolate, but this neat enolate has a way of getting rid of that negative charge very easily. It just comes back, uh, reforms the carbonyl, moves over the double bonds, and kicks out the hydroxide. And this is called an enal because it's an aldehyde and, a key, and, and, an, al and an alkene. So why does this whole system work? Well, it, the key thing is that this is more stable than two aldehydes, is that you've gained, uh, you've gained uh, this carbon-carbon bond system. The aldehyde carbonyls are not all that stable because they, don't have, they don't only have one substituent. So you've gained energy in this whole process. And this is the aldol condensation. Going all the way down here, you've condensed two aldehydes to form this enal. In between, you've got the, uh, the aldol. Now, if you play your conditions right, you can stop at the aldol stage, uh, but if you have a little bit more base, it'll go, it'll go ahead and uh, form uh, uh, the now. So anyway, this, this, this uh, ends up giving you a whole lot of, of new chemistry to, uh, to worry about and or utilize if you're going to do something useful. So let's go through and just do this once more again. Here's, here's an aldehyde, and here I'm gonna give you another one up here. And I just, I'm going to color code these. So this one's blue and this one's black. And so we're, what are we going to do? We're going to form our first enolate. Okay. And this enolate is going to come back and react with, this, with the second aldehyde to give, to give us our, our, our addition product here. We're going to grab the proton. We'll go to our enol, uh, add another hydroxide to do the uh, elimination. And uh, the elimination here, when finished, will give us uh, our, 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 our enol. And you can see from the color coding down here is that the first aldehyde is this piece over here on the right, and the second one, is, second aldehyde is this piece over here in the left in blue. And the way to look upon this is that this double bond, uh, there's an oxygen missing, which is the oxygen of the of the second aldehyde, and of course the two hydrogens of the first uh, aldehyde are missing. So we've pulled out a mole of water. This is uh, this is uh, uh, the nature of this. Now. These things are all in equilibrium. No, we got I've got equilibrium arrows, arrows everywhere. Is because when these things sit in aqueous base, this is all going back and forth, and it's 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 a product mix. So one thing you always have to worry about in these kinds of reactions is that they can go backwards, and uh, sometimes this will lead to unexpected results because well, the going backwards can be more important than the going forwards. So uh, that's the net reaction down there, and uh, you're forming an E now. Okay. That reaction, aldol enol. Okay, so let's let's work one of these. Can you draw the structure of the product? 
So uh, this is this is the uh, uh, a very simple case. Uh, we're going to we we want to we going want to go all the way to the enal. So how 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 do we recognize this? Well, this is this is the, also the first problem uh, uh, first problem for you to work down below. Uh, see if you can uh, uh, draw it in down there. Don't stop the video for a second and draw it in uh, down down below. Okay, you got it drawn in. Uh, we're going to look at the look look at the product, and of course the product is B. Um, how do we know it's B? Well, the easiest way to do it is just kind of draw your original uh, aldehyde up here. Draw another one underneath it. And you can kind of do lasso chemistry here, where you pull out a mole of water and take the carbonyl double bond and make it a double bond to the carbon. And in, uh, the one way to get your product right, uh, if you're if you're in the in 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 Oscar, is just to just do this literally. Take one molecule, copy it, uh, draw it below, and uh, raise the oxygen, draw the double bond up there, and you, you've got the right product. Now, uh, one of the one of the problems on this is that you'll get in reality, you'll always get easy mixtures. And uh, it's it's difficult to predict which one which one you're going to get. Generally, this is this is equilibrium chemistry, so you're going to get the one which is thermodynamically the most stable. Uh, and indeed, I may have drawn the wrong one here because uh, uh, this isopropyl group is probably bigger than that carbonyl, so it probably wants to be the other isomer. But you're going to get a mix, and quite quite frankly, we we there's no real way of of uh, uh, necessarily predicting what that mixture is going to be. So we're just going to have to live with the fact that most of our products are going to be mixtures. Okay, so can you do this problem in reverse? Now here I've taken some aldehyde. I've, we've done the condensation, and here, 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 here is the uh, 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 the enal product. So can you can you uh, figure out what the uh, reactant is going to be? So again, uh, pause pause the video and see if you can draw this out. This is problem two, uh, and here's well here's some candidates. Uh, so, uh, if you got it done, go ahead and do it. Oh, okay, I'll show you the answer. So, again, all we, we are going to basically do is, uh, 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 again, we're simply asking uh, the question of, uh, uh, we're going to take this double bond now, now split it apart, put oxygen on one side, the two hydrogens on the other, and, and of course this is our fragment, which is indeed molecule B down here. So this is this is this is not hard to do. And again, if you're going forward with this, you could get easy isomers. Okay, what about a ketone? Can you do the same reaction with a ketone? Uh, well, you can, but there's a catch. Uh, you you form an enolate uh, with uh, a ketone, and this enolate can indeed react with another mole of ketone and you'd get the same kind of addition product. You could pick up a proton, and you could go to uh, something uh, uh, that looks like an enal, except, well, it's ketone, so it's not really an enal. And uh, lose, lose a proton, uh, form this new enolate, and it did do the elimination, and you could go to this, which is kind of like uh, an enal, but of course it's not because it's a ketone. Although people often call this an enal just because of the similarity. Now, the problem with this is that when we did it with aldehydes, um, it was definitely the case where the product was more stable than uh, the original aldehyde. The problem is ketones are more stable to start with. And so in this particular case, it, 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 turn, it turns out that this guy up here on top in particular is, uh, is uh, less stable than two ketones. So it, it, wants, it wants to go to the it wants to do the reverse reaction, and it's simply a matter of thermodynamics. All this stuff is in equilibrium, and two ketones are more stable than the uh, than the uh, uh, aldol type uh, uh, product, and so uh, generally this doesn't happen. It just if you just uh, throw throw some base into uh, a ketone, you simply this is simply uh, is not not a big issue. But what if you want it to happen? Because there's a way you can trick the molecules, uh, so so you can do it. Well, the key thing is controlling the hydroxide. Is that if you do this reaction, you will form this. But the problem is, is that the base will turn around and uh, then just force you backwards. The base is as acting as a catalyst in this whole thing. And uh, what if we could be really clever and we could figure out a way to catalyze the forward reaction? 
but prevent the ca same catalyst from catalyzing the reverse reaction? Well, there is a way, and it, 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 it's, it's, it's things you have to do in the laboratory, and I'll show you an example. And we're going to use a, uh, a piece of apparatus called a soxalate extractor. Now, a soxalate extractor is an amazing thing. Here we have a round bottom flask with a condenser up on top. So what's going to happen? We're going to, we're going to heat up this flask. There's this the red thing around it is a heating source. It's a heating mantle. We're going to start, the, we're, we're, we're going to start this guy going. Because in the bottom, we're going to put some acetone. And what's going to happen is we're going to watch the acetone uh, reflux. It's going to boil. It's going to go up here in the condenser, and then it's going to fall back down. Now, what's going to do? It's going to fall into this little chamber. In this little chamber, there's some solid barium hydroxide. That's going to serve as the hydroxide, and it's going to catalyze this reaction. So we're, we're, we're making some of our compound up here. Now, the way this thing, soxalate extraction works is that there's a tube here. This goes up and down. This will act as a siphon. When you fill up this little chamber up to the top of the siphon, this, it's, it's like flushing a toilet. You, 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 you come up and it activates the siphon and it pulls everything out of this chamber back down in here. So what will happen is we make this product, it'll slowly, it'll start to build up in here, but when it gets to the top, it'll come and it'll come down here. So that's this, the green color is supposed to be representing uh, the, uh, 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 the product. And it'll come down in here. Now the problem is, the problem with this is it can't go backwards because down here there's no base. It can be doing some reverse reaction up there, but if it makes it into the bottom chamber, it's good. It's not going to go back because there's no base down there. So this is a trick where you can catalyze the first reaction, the forward reaction, but not the reverse reaction. You remove the material from the catalyst. And so this might be a slow process because what's going up here in the chamber will be going back and forth. But if any of the product escapes, then it's safe because when it gets down in here, it's, it's, it's going to, it's going to uh, be uh, not in contact with the hydroxide. Now the key thing that makes it too is that the boiling point of the acetone is, uh, is uh, lower than the boiling point of the product simply because it's heavier. And so uh, the acetone will be uh, boiling up here, refluxing up here and coming down, but the product won't. So that's pretty neat. It's a way of preventing the reverse reaction because you wipe out uh, uh, the hydroxide. And uh, so your aldol product will build up in there, that's the green product and it'll come down. So the product separated from the catalyst, so dehydration reaction, the reverse reaction, does not occur. So that's pretty neat. Okay, so um, that's ketones. So ketones do work, but they're difficult. Okay, acid catalyzed aldol. We looked at before forming uh, the uh, aldol using base, but it turns out you can also uh, do it with acid. Because what happens if you hit the aldehyde with, with uh, a proton? Well, you're, you're, you're going to catalyze the formation uh, of, an e, uh, of an enol. Well, enols also will, will react with uh, protonated aldehyde. Now you're an acid, so your aldehyde gets protonated. That means the aldehyde started off reacting, reactive, now it's really reactive. So enols are not as reactive as enolates, uh, but protonated aldehyde is more reactive than an aldehyde. So this reaction will still work and you'll go to the addition product, which is now there as an acid. And uh, it, uh, as an acid, it turns out that this, this uh, dehydration is really easy because you're gonna protonate that OH, and now it's a very simple elimination. It's essentially now an E1 elimination where you're gonna form a conjugated alkene, which is quite stable. So uh, acid-catalyzed aldols go quite well, and it's essentially impossible to stop them in the middle because the dehydration is really, really easy. So it's very easy to form the enals, not so easy to form an, enol, an aldol from uh, uh, an acid catalyzed reaction. Okay, we've talked about uh, cases where aldehydes are reacting with themselves. What if you're gonna react one aldehyde with another? In principle, you could do this reaction. Here I have R1 and R2, two different aldehydes. Why can't we just condense them and we put on two different R groups? That looks like a really useful reaction. Well, the problem is, of course, it can go either way, uh, is that this is called a crossed aldol reaction, and we want R1 and R2 to react in this very specific way, but of course, <laughs> it can do it the other way as well. There's nothing to say 
that the which 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 hydrogens are being removed, the ones that the R2 or the ones that the R1. Well, both can happen. And of course, as soon as you form the, the uh, enolate from one of these, it can react with the other molecule or it can react with itself. So you could get two R1s or you could get two R2s. So these two different aldehydes, you got four different products. So this is basically useless, all right? Uh, this is not a uh, uh, something really worth doing. But uh, so four products. So can you make this useful? Well, you can. And again, you just have to choose your reactants properly. What if we have an, have an aldehyde, but the aldehyde doesn't have any alpha hydrogens? So this here is, this is benzaldehyde. There's no, there's no hydrogens on the neighboring carbons. This is a phenyl over here. So this, you're going to have to form the enolate from this one. So now, uh, when you form this one, uh, uh, the enolate over here, that's the only alpha hydrogen, you're going to form that enolate. It, can, it, it, it uh, uh, is much more likely to react with uh, the other aldehyde. And uh, now you'll, you have a true crossed aldol condensation. And uh, you, you do your dehydration. And here's our, 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 our it's all set up to our cross product. So it's much more likely to do this. Well, you do have to still worry about one other. Uh, you do have to about one other uh, uh, product is, of course, the self-condensation product. So now you, but you've gone from four possible products down to two. Now, is there a way to uh, minimize uh, the cross product? Well, there is. And the way to do it is when you get to this point, what if the concentration of uh, the benzaldehyde here was simply greater than that? So well, we want to use an excess of, uh, of this one. So when we get to the uh, enolate stage down here, it's much more likely to find one of these molecules than that. So use an excess. Well, using an excess sounds like a really good idea, but of course it's inherently wasteful. If we just use, I mean, if we use one mole of this and 10 moles of that, it means we would have nine moles of the benzaldehyde kind of going to waste. Could we do it to one to one and, or say one to two or, or one to three, and it would not be so wasteful? Well, there is, there is another trick. So let's try that we're going to do this uh, crossed aldol reaction. And the trick we're going to use is we're going to set it up so we max we we um, maximize uh, the production of our desired product and minimize the production of our cross product. So what we're going to do is we're going to use we just a simple dropping funnel here, and in the bottom uh, or sorry in the top we're going to put our uh, our our uh, first compound, the one which is which is where we want to form the enolate that. So we want to form the enolate of this guy. So we're putting this in the in the in the dropping funnel on top. And down here in the bottom, we're going to put our benzaldehyde and the base. Now the the base, it's it's reacting. You got to watch the base can't react to the benzaldehyde, but the base will react with the, with the aldehyde. Let's go let's go back and do that again. Okay, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the benzaldehyde and the base down here. So the hydroxide and the benzaldehyde, they won't do anything alone. The base will only react with uh, uh, the other product. Now, this, the, when the, so we're going to put the blue guy up here on the funnel. It's going to drop in slowly, which means that this will be an excess because we're only dropping this one in. And, but as soon as this one comes in here, it'll react to the hydroxide, form its enolate, and react. So what it means is uh, the uh, benzaldehyde is always going to be in excess. That's always going to be in excess. So let's watch the reaction again. Uh, we're going to put the uh, in the bottom. It's dropping in. It's dropping in. We're going to do the reaction. We're doing the reaction. And now we're all done. And we've got a good yield of our, our final product. And we basically we've wiped out uh, the cross product because it just never has an opportunity to react to itself. So that's pretty neat. So people do figure out ways of doing these things. Now you still have a product mixture because the EZ problem here is still there and, and uh, you're going to get a mixture of isomers uh, at, uh, for, at this point. Okay, but that gets going. Now here are four enals. And let's say you want to do this cross um, uh, reaction with these. Which one of these would be the most difficult to form in high yield? And uh, how would you figure out this? Well, what you're looking for is a candidate, a, a, a pair of aldehydes where one has an alpha hydrogen and the other one doesn't. 
So which one? Which one? Uh, which ones have that characteristic? Three of them have that characteristic. I'll tell you right up the front, and the fourth one doesn't. So uh, you just go through and figure out which aldehydes you use for each one. Write them down, and uh, then you can figure that out. So again, pause the video for a second here, and this is this is another problem down below. Okay. Uh, which ones work? Well, this would be uh, you form the enolate here. This one has this one has no alpha hydrogen, so this one would, would, would work. Uh, here, there's alpha hydrogen here. There's down there. This one would work. Here, the T-butyl group has no hydrogens. Here's the hydrogens. This one will work. But this one, ah, sorry, you can form enolates from either one of these things. There's no way you're going to get this one, this one to work. So uh, that's a brief look at uh, aldehydes, the aldol, a little bit look at ketones, and it's important chemistry, a little bit complicated, but it turns out it's, it's, it's quite useful.